We're doing a tier list of the most played one drops in Commander. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, and that makes us the nitpicking nerds. And we make videos every single day. So if you want to support us on Patreon, for example, you could go to that website in the description. And if you do, we'll love you as much as we can without making you uncomfortable. Yes, and if you want to support us indirectly, you can buy Dragon Shields. They have the best sleeves in the multiverse. Good sleeves. And those sleeves are going to be on every single one of your decks because you're going to use our link in the description to buy those sleeves. And then you're going to have them so you can put them on all your decks. And guess what? We use them on all of our decks. So you have to be just like us. We're sponsored by Moxfield. And you can go to moxfield.com because they're the best decks building website ever. There's going to be an ad. Uh, it's going to be real obvious where it is real quick, but you have to guess now and you will fail. Also, happy birthday to everyone's birthdays today. All right. So what today is, is it's a tier list, but the only thing we really got to do is shrink down so we can talk about these one drops. They're all the most played, the 25 most played one drops in the format with some condensation. So unlike some of our other tier lists, like Ramp, we will not be comparing these cards against each other. We're just going to tell you how good they are in Commander because these don't fit in the same slots. They all do different things. Like the first one is Birds of Paradise, which is a stand-in for all Mana Dorks. I doubt you want to see us rank eight different Mana Dorks out of 28 cards. So this is just one ones, one Mana dudes, a tap for one. Death Ray Chalman, they're all here. Any given one of them. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty simple. Birds of Paradise is an incredible magic card. No doubt about it. And Mana Dorks overall, they're great. I mean, if you're playing a creature-based deck, they're some of the best ramp you can have, period. This some is of the, the only cards that scale from the absolute bottom of the power level scale to the absolute top. This is the easiest S tier ever. I mean, you just... Mana Dorks are staples of the format. They'll always be staples of the format. And especially if we just do Birds of Paradise, which is probably one of the best, or Death Rite, whichever one you consider the best, it's S tier for sure. For sure. Next, we got Brainstorm. This is the draw three, put two back. Classic. One of the cards we think is like the most overhyped. Maybe the most overhyped card in Commander. It's pretty good. Uh, it's not a card we really ever play unless you have a ton of synergies with it because drawing three, putting two back without rearranging your cards or without uh, shuffling is kind of just worthless. It's not any much better than a cantrip. Yeah, I want things that I want top deck manipulation or I want a ton of shuffle effects. Both are the cases where I'll play this, but either way, I think this is like a C. I don't think Brainstorm is a bad magic card. Don't get me wrong. It's definitely a good magic card. It's just most decks don't need it. Uh, you have to build around it and... oh. Most of these one drops, you don't need that. And this is just, I don't play this in Commander. If it's mostly a cantrip, I'm not playing it. Yeah. Let's go to crop rotation. And crop rotation very much depends on what you're playing. Depends on the best land in your deck, basically. Because it's one mana, and it turns one of your lands into the best land in your deck. And that land comes in untapped, because this card is bonkers. Yeah, this card's really, really good. Crop rotation is, is a very good card, but requires a ton of synergy. Like, you have to be playing a lands deck or you have to have, like, two or three lands in your deck that you specifically want all the time. I mean, if Gaia's Cradle's in your deck, you probably could just play this. You have to. You could just play this every single time because why would you not? I think this one's a B. It's a really good card, but I think it's hyper-specific. It's kind of specific. If you have Gaia's Cradle, it's not even close. It has to be in your deck. There's, I think this could probably see playing a lot more decks than it does. If you got, like, Nykthos and Field of the Dead... I wonder if you could just play this. I don't know. It's tough. It's kind of like one of those good stuffy cards that doesn't synergize if you're not playing lands matters. This puts you down on a card. Yeah, you just basically discard a card to turn a land into your best land. Yeah, so is that worth it? You have to go down. Is it worth it? Um, that's the tough part. Maybe, sometimes, in a lot of cases, yes. All the cases, no. So I'd probably just play it in lands decks. B seems fine. Uh, if Guy's Cradle is the land you get, you can go ahead and move it up to S. <laughs> Let's go to Dark Ritual. Is black. And you add three black. It's a ritual. It's good for spamming, storming, fast mana-ing. Yeah, um, dark ritual is exactly what it sounds like. A dark ritual, too. It's, it's a ritual, <laughs> but dark. <laughs> Ooh, and you make mana. So this one is totally fine. It's really good and hyper-competitive when you're trying to, like, turbo out something like Ad Nauseum and those kind of decks. But in casual commander, again, much like crap rotation, you go down a card to bring something out early, how good is that? Depends on what you're bringing out. Depends on how strong your deck is. Depends on what your meta is. I have this one in, what, C or B? What do you think? I think it's definitely a C because it feels like if your commander can draw a bunch of cards, if you have, like, Tybalt or something or a commander that's just going to come down or a high density of cards that are going to come down and replace your card that you're not going to feel bad for being down a card on this, then this card's great. And if you're going to win on turn three, this card's great. But if those aren't true, I'm, I don't really want to play it. It's, it's a one-turn, like... 
mana crypt, right? Where you get you get those two mana right away. <laughs> I, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Mana I'll, crypt with uh, with what like blitz? <laughs> it's blitz mana crypt. Yeah, this that's the best take we've ever had. Hottest take ever. Dark Ritual is Blitzed Mana Crypt. I want to just, like, tweet that <laughs> with no context. All right. Esper Sentinel is the next card. I couldn't even think of his name. It's going to draw cards if they don't pay mana for their first non-creature spell to his power, so it can scale up. Card is basically an auto-include in every white deck ever made. Yeah, it's interesting. This is one I have in A or S. It's one of the two... I want to have creatures, basically, and I want to maybe have ways to pump its power, but that's not super important. This is tough. I, how... If I'm playing it in every single white deck I ever build, it's got to be S, right? That, that's fair, yeah. I don't know if it's every single white deck. Like 97 out of 100? Something like that? That's fair. Yeah, this is, I, I can see S tier. I mean, this card's really good. Esper Sentinel has outperformed everything I've expected of it. I thought it was a good card when I saw it. I'm like, but I'll test it. And every time I see it, it's just like, yeah, the card actually just does a ton. And it tends to draw a lot of hate. Like, it's not a card you're like, I have to remove that. But when you do remove it, Unless you're using exactly a one mana removal spell, you're losing mana advantage every single time. And they're losing mana advantage every time. You're gaining mana. Oh, advantage. you're gaining mana advantage. You're right. And also on top of that, if they pay the one for their one mana spell, mana advantage already. Yeah, it's, it's it had the potential to just be a lame hindrance, like half of the white card draw or ramp spells are. But this one was actually good. Next is Faithless Looting. You draw two, discard two for a red, and it flashes back for three. Again. Wow, it's card disadvantage, but if you're hyper fast, got a bunch of flashback, bunch of graveyard stuff, it can actually read, draw like four cards. Faithless League is another card I think is hyper overplayed because people just throw it into any type of red deck, even like red decks with no graveyard synergy, and I think that that's a big mistake. This is decent card selection, but if you're not working with those cards you're putting in your graveyard, Faithless League puts you down a card again, and it's not worth going down a card unless you're working with those cards in your graveyard. So even though I think it's overplayed, it's still a good card. I probably have this one in B tier. B tier, wow. I was probably going to stick it in like D tier because I feel like even in the decks where it's good, it's pretty replaceable. I don't know. See, it seems it's the very best at what it does. I don't, I don't even know, is it? Yes, it definitely well, what, what are you saying? Like the very best draw two, discard two, or the very best discard outlet? Because it's not the best discard outlet. It's the very best like... Draw some cards and then and then discard. It's the it's, <laughs> like that's so specific. It is. It's a I very guess. Specific, it's a very specific card, but it, I think it is very good at what it well, does. I'll definitely bring you down to C tier because I don't I'll really play this card that often. It's not like if I have a graveyard deck, I'm like, yes, time to play Faithless Looting. Well, you need to have a graveyard deck and you need to have a red deck, right? Because but it, so like you're a graveyard deck, but you're not a creature deck. Because I wouldn't play this in a creature deck because you just have creatures that mill you. Sure, it's a, I guess I just don't know where to play it. Okay. Madness? Ceasefire. For Ceasefire. Uh, I mean, Oscar is the first deck that always comes to my mind for Faithless Looting. Oscar? The... As you mean like, oh, Asgir. Asgir. Yeah, that's what comes to my mind for Faithless Looting, where it's like, it's really good in that deck. Could be. But maybe you just want an artifact that mills. There's not that, but there's not that many artifacts that mill. All right, let's go to Mana Vault, because we're done talking about Faithless Looting. This is a artifact, taps for three. It is almost identical to Dark Ritual, because you're not going to untap it very often, unless you got shenanigans. Yes. Uh, this one, this card, I think, is better than Dark Ritual, because... There is a lot of decks that have a lot of synergy with this card, where if you can untap it over and over and over again, this card gets uber, uber powerful. And there are definitely decks that can do that. This is also a competitive card. So like your CDH list that are trying to, again, you know, hyper just, we're going ad nauseum. We're going, uh, what is the other one? Thoracle combos. Thoracle combos. We're just trying, I'm trying to turbo out some sort of combo. You're going to see this. So I, th I have this one up in B tier probably. I think it's a B. I don't really play this in normal commander decks. It's not, I don't think it's even that great. It's like Dark Ritual. If you just throw it into your deck, it's probably not that great. But if you have synergies, it could be amazing. I think it's exactly, yeah, exactly. You need to be able to untap it. A super artifact centric deck. That's where I'm playing this. Other than that, you know, I probably avoid it. It's I think it's a again kind of an overhyped card because it's like this card is like two hundred dollars and everyone thinks it goes in every deck. But I think I'm not untapping it very often, right? How often have I I used to play this in some decks? It just stays tapped. Yeah. You right? just take like six damage from it. Yeah, you just take six damage from it. It stays tapped when you uh ramped into something. I mean, if that's something you ramped it to was worth it, then the card is probably worth playing, but you really got to be sure. Yeah, I mean, you were ramping into Maelstrom Wanderer, so that was that was well worth the discard of a card, basically. Next is one drop I'll never drop. It's Moxville.com. It's a website where you can build decks, and it's not even close S-tier. 
something really random that the website does that I think is super awesome is it tells your average mana value when you're using ad nauseum. So if you scroll down, it's like using ad nauseum. You want to know how much damage you're going to take off of this on average? It'll just tell you. That's really, really cool. And it'll tell you your average mana value anyway, with or without lands. So I just like that that's an extra little touch. They go they go to a lot of lengths to please the people who use their site. And that's just what makes it one of the smoothest, easiest to use websites that has ever existed. Yeah, exactly. They love what they're doing and they love making this website. And this is the perfect deck building website. There's nothing wrong with it. If you find a flaw, you're flawed, not them. Don't sleep on it. Let's go to Mystic Remora. If your opponents cast a non-creature spell, they got to pay four mana or you get to draw a card. Yeah, this card is really really powerful. Again, this is another one of those that scales from like uh, super low power EDH to super high power EDH. You can play it everywhere in between. It almost always is drawing cards. Because they can't pay. It's just not possible. This thing has cumulative upkeep, but it'll stay around for one, two, or three turns depending on how late in the game it is. And you're going to love it the whole time. Yeah, I think this card is very, very good. It's just an S tier for me. Another it's, S. It's one of the best ways to draw in the entire format. It's super powerful. It's super annoying. It's always there. And it's just like, Pay, pay the four? It's like, no, I can't you know, pay the four. Don't even ask me. Why just you, shut up. Just, just, just take your cards. Take I, don't, your card. I don't want to give you cards, but I'm giving you cards. Yeah, much like Esper Sentinel, as you scrunch your mana curve to the one, twos, and threes, these cards just get better. Yeah, it's really, it's just, a, such, it's such a strong magic card, and no one can ever pay. Like BZ said, you just, you can't pay four. Four is a tempo black hole. Yeah, exactly. You, you're going to pay four every single spell you cast? No, I don't think so. Well, here's an answer. It's Nature's Claim. It'll destroy an artifact or enchantment, and its controller gains four life. These are all one mana, so is it really worth saying that they cost one mana? It is a one mana destroy any artifact enchantment. It's our go-to. I think this is A tier? I was going to say it's our first A because it's just rock solid, and I really never leave home without this. Even if I'm in like a 50-creature deck, I want one or two instant speed non-creature answers to some nonsense. It's interesting. I think we said we weren't going to compare them to each other, but when you're looking at a list and your top has... Birds of Paradise, Esper Sentinel, and Mystic Remora. It's tough to put Nature's Claim in the same category, right? I, I don't know. I just don't think the upside is as high as those cards. I, I think it's just a league below. Well, so so what I'm saying is uh, if we were doing a naturalized tier list, it would be S, right? Then Because then we'd be comparing naturalizes to each other. Yeah. This is just how good all these cards in Commander. Oh, okay, that's fair. Okay, that that's fair. So, yeah, I, this is a this is probably the best naturalized. Uh, one I would of, say so oh, because the, our favorite naturalized, the best one we have access to, is Druid of Purification. It doesn't really translate into CDH. So overall, the best one's probably uh, Nature's Claim. Nature's Claim is or a, Force of Vigor, maybe. Yeah, those two are very very good magic cards. Hey, we play this in almost every green deck. Pretty much an auto include for us. Man, turns out one drops are pretty good. Let's go to Path to Exile. You're exiling a creature, one mana. And then they're going to get a basic land tapped. That ain't so bad. The, this is 100% living in the shadow of Swords to Plowshares, though. So it rarely sees as much play as the other one. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think Swords is such is a much, much better card. What you're giving your opponent is a lot less of a resource. A tapped land is so, so much more than life that basically means nothing at all. I have this in B tier. It's a card I don't go to super often, but I'm aware that it is super good in Commander. One mana removal spells, especially the Exile at instant speed, that's strong. Yeah, and if you are playing a token deck or something, you can ramp yourself. I, I would sacrifice token to cast one mana ramp at Grove. Yeah, no, there's no doubt that Path to Exile is a good magic card. It's just one, I, one me and BZ don't play very often. No, why don't I get to one we don't play very often? Ponder. Look at the top three, rearrange them, you can shuffle your deck, and then you draw a card. All right, so we don't talk too much about CDH in other than CDH, I don't like this card at all personally. When when the percentage of cards you're looking at, like if this is like, oh, this is 10% of the cards I'm going to look at this game, it's like, whoa. But if it's like, this is 5% of the cards I'm going to look at this game, it's like, eh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really like, I, Pondra just doesn't do it for me. These cantrips, unless, unless I'm triggering like Magecraft and all these kind of things, cantrips don't do it for me. I need specific synergies with these. I'm never going to just play Ponder. I'm not going to do it. Exactly. So where do you have this? Because this one's super interesting because undeniably Ponder is a strong magic card, but in Commander, without synergies, I just feel like you're just spinning your wheels for no reason. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it might be a step below Brainstorm because there's not there's not a, uh, a criteria I meet where I'm like, oh man, Ponder would be extra good. It's like, it's just Ponder. It's just always okay and I don't really need to play it. It's interesting. It, it, you can go to a Spell Slinger deck, basically. Exactly. Um, I would play, I think I would play Ponder in more decks, though, personally. Because, like, Ponder's going to be the first go-to 
Cantrip? Uh, cantrip I go to. Where it's like if I want if you to. don't have synergy, you're not playing Brainstorm, you're playing Ponder. Yes, I'm going to play Ponder first. But I would say I'm never thrilled to play Ponder, we but can, I could be thrilled to play Brainstorm. We could put this in D. Just put it in D. Yeah. It's not like it's that bad. It's just never sees, just never gets played, and the upside's pretty low. Yeah, completely fair. It's good if your whole deck is one drops, and it can be, if every other card in this uh, list is on in your deck, then it'll be pretty good. Yeah. Next, we have Pognify slash Rapid Hybridization. One mana, destroy something, they get a 3-3, three, three, and for some reason, these cards just say they can't be regenerated. Why not? Why not? Why not? Uh, this is pretty simple for me. It goes right below Path to Exile, where it's just like, the thing that makes this one a little better, or like fighting with Path to Exile, even though it's like distinctively worse, is the fact that it's in blue. Color so, pie. Color pie, yeah, exactly. White can answer creatures, no problem. Blue often struggles with that, so this is one of the go-tos. One mana, answer any creature is good. Giving him a 3-3 three, three is a little bit of a downside, uh, not that much. It's funny, I, these are, I, man, they, they're like potentially worse than Path to Exile and see so much more play. Oh, yeah, exactly, because color pie is a super important thing in Magic. Like, Although I'd, sometimes I'd rather just give them a 3-3 three, three than a land, it depends. It does depend, yeah. What are you? Which one do you think is actually better? I don't know, because it's Exile versus Destroy. I'm going to not decide. How about that? Yeah. I'll remain impartial. I think Path to Exile is probably the better card. All but. right, next we got one of my favorite cards of all time. I don't even know why. Preordain, you scry two and draw a card for one mana. I love playing this. I will play it more than I should, but realistically, it's just like right below Ponder, right? I, I don't know. This is like, is this, this might be the... Preordain is the next best cantrip after Ponder. I yeah, think. I'm, I'm looking at our list and this might be, this is close to poop tier. I mean, this is a card I don't never... Don't do dirty. I'm going to give, I'm going to do D tier. I never want to put play Faithless this. Looting in C tier, I'm putting Preordain in D tier. Faithless Looting has tons of synergies. It works with a lot of decks. Pond, but Preordain, you scry too. Prior, did you consider yeah, that? Yeah, Preordain does not do anything like that. It's such a, it's not good. It's really not like good. it's just right up there with Ponder. They're like, borderline interchangeable they're both like higher play in the cdh decks that we don't really we don't really play or talk about too much on the channel so Fine. if you're wondering what we're talking about there uh next to reanimate you're gonna bring back any creature in any graveyard and you lose life to its mana value it just goes straight into play this is cheating so much mana it's not even funny oh reanimate is so so good it's the best reanimation spell in the entire format we have 40 Stupid life to work with. It's so good that you said it's the best reanimation spell because they're all named after it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Reanimation spells are named after reanimate because, well, reanimate is the very best one. One mana, anything. It's got to be anything. Got to be A tier, right? It's yeah. just so good. I think it's the top of A tier, above nature's claim. It's just such a good magic card. It just doesn't quite crack S tier because. You want a ton of synergy, right? Like you need to be that graveyard deck where you're going to reanimate your stuff. But the fact that this this hits other people's stuff too. Why is this card so silly? Yeah. On the off chance you don't have the best dead thing, you just take it anyway. What a silly, silly magic card reanimate is. How much life do I start at? Forty. Wow. Great. I'll reanimate a, a twelve drop, a thirteen drop. I'll reanimate your thirteen, thirteen flying spaghetti monster. Why not? Let's go to Sensei's Divining Top. One of the most played cards in the whole format. I'm not even gonna read it. You can look at the top cards and do other. You can draw a card. It's like this is part of a lot of infinite combos. A lot of people just kind of throw it in their deck, and it's not even that bad. It's not as, uh, like, it's kind of fillery like Ponder would be. We're like, yeah, you could just play it. But I think the upside of the top is even higher than that. This one is super interesting to me because uh, I'm looking, and it's like S tier, A tier. It's one of those two for sure. This, this is, is very good. It, it has a, It's like a lot of upside. It really is kind of like the permanent version of Ponder, and it's kind of like how Dark Ritual is lower than Mana Vault because Mana Vault's a permanent. Sensei's top would be higher than... It does so many combos it, they're all over the place like like you said there's the boss of citadel stuff you if you reduce its cost i mean putting top on top of your deck is broken it, that's it yeah exactly so you can just keep casting and redoing it there's a lot of ways to just draw your entire deck using sensei's divining top it's a top of a is the minimum for this card that's probably what i would do or, just put it in, you know it does a lot it, it does it does a lot you're really good sensei's divining top do you think s Ah, it's so close. It's so close to us. I think bottom of us. If it's a card you can just play in like any deck and then there's like 10 decks that just win with it, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's like it's a card that might be a little overplayed, but throwing it in your deck is never bad. That's how good this silly magic card is. And technically this card is just like, this is like card disadvantage overall, but the card selection it survive, or provides overall is like in Incredible. Also, it lets you hit land jobs you're going to miss. Like, you can just go pay three, look at the top three. All right, there was a land way down. Put it on top of my library, play the land. Yeah, we're not talking, like, 
turn two either. Don't do that. Don't, don't top lock yourself. This is like turn five or six. Like, great, I have a bunch of stuff to do. I'm going to hit my land drop every turn forever now. Yeah, exactly. Top top just does way too much for way too little mana. That's why it's banned in Modern and Legacy. Yeah, and also it takes forever to resolve this card. Uh, let's go to Skull Clamp. This card's busted. It kills creatures for one mana equips, and you draw two cards when the quick creature dies. It's like the best equipment in the game, and... Banned and everything else, not that that matters for this, but it's just fantastic. It's not even close to the best equipment in the game. I don't think that anything is even can hold a candle to this I was card. like, am I forgetting something? I is just, Gaius Cradle and equipment? There's just no equipment that comes close to what Skull Clamp provides. It is the most card draw you can get. You don't need barely any synergy. You need creatures. Do you have creatures in your deck? Oh, guess what? You can just throw Skull Clamp in, and you're going to draw a ton of cards. Even if your creatures... Don't have one toughness. If you have no one toughness creatures, this is still a strong magic card. It's so good. I mean, is it just S tier? It's easy S tier. It's uh, it's above Sensei's top, I would okay. say. Okay, because it's just, when you see it, you're in trouble. Because they're going to start drawing four or five, well, five, four or six cards right away. Yeah, it's it's one of, it's a, I would say it's a groaner. It's one of those guys when I say, ugh, we got to kill that. Let's answer the skull clamp. I know it's a Temple Black Hole. We're gonna, they're going to just draw seven million cards, and we're still going to have to answer it going down a card. Going down on mana. Yeah, going down on mana and going down a card. It's like, ugh. Great. We have to do it because. It's a must kill. It's going to keep drawing cards. Okay, how about we do this? And then go to the next one. Soul Ring is the best card in the entire format, or one of the best cards up there with Mana Crypt. It's not close. It goes in literally every single commander deck ever built. Pain Bow, which is the first uh, deck they've ever made without it, should have had it. Probably should have still had it. We will we will say this probably to our graves or until Soul Ring gets banned. It's ruined more games of commander than any other card, hands and, down. And it will continue to do so until banned. <laughs> until banned, but it might not get banned. Swan Song is not going to get banned because it's one mana instant that counters the sorcery, instant, or enchantment spell, and they get a stupid 2-2 two -two bird. Yeah, this one's interesting. This one gets better as you get into higher power games because uh, mana efficiency on counter spells is really, really powerful. Difference between 2 and 1 is enormous. It is so I almost, I was thinking, have you ever, okay, this is going to be really random. Uh, we're going to go really random. Have you ever done uh, with a little kid where you say, how big is, how big is like the little kid? And they go, so big. You were going to do that? that that's what it made me think of. I almost said, so big. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad we had this conversation. Where do you put uh, Swan Song? I was thinking, A, I think it's, uh, uh, it goes right below nature's claim. In the counter spell, like, range. Other than free counter spells, this is one of the very best counter spells in the format. Right. Whether you're playing high power, mid power, it's going to get huge mana advantage. Whether you're countering expropriates or ponders, you're going to be feel pretty good about it. It's a you're, well, you're, if you do not, that means you're way ahead. Do don't counter ponder with this card. That means you're way ahead. I don't know what situation comes up that you're countering a ponder with this. <laughs> Source of plowshares, best creature removal in the format. Above Path to Exile, certainly do we want to put it in A. I put it in the top of A. Yes. Uh, it's still just spot removal, uh, and spot removal. I can't. I don't think it can go much higher than an A. When you're when you're talking about the best cards in the format, you're just talking about how good. Yeah, for, is, as for removal, Path to Exile is just probably the single best spot removal spell in the entire format, which is awesome. Uh, but other than that, I don't think you can go into S because you it can't. It feels like a step down from Soul Ring, or it feels like a step down from like Mana Dorks or Skull Clamp. Yeah, all those other cards are just incredible. They just do a little bit more. Yeah, it, it feels like the, the top of S tier is just like, it's efficient, it does a little something, something, and then it actively contributes to winning you the game. Yeah, those cards those cards are all amazing, except for Mana Dorks. They, they, well, I guess they, they ramp. They generate you. like six mana if for you, one. When you play two mana, when you go Mana Dork, Mana Dork, Mana Dork, and then you untap on turn. The next turn with six mana, uh, yeah, that contributes you winning the game. That will help you win. Vampiric Tutor is a stand-in for this Swirly Tutor, Enlightened Tutor, and Mystical Tutor. They all find your best card of varying types, or Vampiric Tutors, any type, and then puts it right on top of your deck. It's card disadvantage, but it's a tutor for one mana at instant speed. One mana instant speed tutors are obviously incredible. It goes on top. You go down a card, but these are still amazing. I think this is right below Soul Ring, where these are just... Yeah, Vamp Tutor is, like, top ten in the format, I think. It is. It's one of the best cards in the entire format. It's... It's whatever card you need for whatever situation is coming up. You draw it, and it's incredible. I mean, I don't know. Do I need to tell you that tutors are super strong? I think as a Magic player, you understand that searching for a card from your deck and putting it into your hand for very little mana, or on top of your deck in this case, is strong. Yeah, let's not waste time on it. We're not going to waste your time. You're not going to waste our time. It's great. Vandal Blast, though, is going to destroy an artifact, or you can overload it for five, which is what mostly happens, to destroy all artifacts you don't control. 
Yeah, uh, Vandal Blast is super strong. I tend to avoid, if I'm playing white in my deck, or I'm playing green in my deck, I avoid Vandal Blast because we can just play spells that hit both artifacts and enchantments when we're in white and green. Green and white have some bangers. Yeah, they really, really do. But outside of those colors in your Grixis decks, this card is very, very good. Gets you a ton of card advantage. And for a lot of decks where all the ramp is artifacts, you just take those off the battlefield, putting them way behind. This feels like it has to go like right here. Cause it's in that it's in the it's like a removal spell that I'll always play, if I'm like two or three of the colors. Yeah, exactly. It's it's very. It, I think it's a little specific because green and white are two colors in Commander, meaning they're two fifths of the format. Meaning two fifths of decks aren't going to touch this. Wow, that was such a long way to say that. <laughs> green and white are two colors. <laughs> it's true. Okay, this is uh, surprisingly high on the most played one drops. This is Village Rights, and you sack a creature to draw two. And now this is going to make Preordain look so good. This is the easiest poop tier. It's not close. It just turns out you can't really play this to much effect in Commander. It's like you kind of go even, sort of, but it's also going to be played in like some kind of heavy creature deck. And I'd rather just have a creature. Yeah, I'm just not a fan of this card. I don't think it goes in almost any Commander deck. Maybe some lower power stuff, but it just it doesn't do it for me. Like I look at this card and I think... Man, I really don't want to sack a creature. And if I'm playing a deck that wants to sack tons of creatures, why am I not playing more creatures? I really don't want a random instant. Exactly. Um, so it's a card I never go to. It's a card I never even think about playing. Like, I've built a ton, a ton of decks, and I haven't thought about playing it. I built a budget Henji deck, and I think I might have tried it in there, and it was still, I didn't like it. No, yeah, this card does not overperform. I've tested it too, because I actually, I like the card. I think it's really cool. I don't think it's any good. So I have it in a deck, and it's not like, it doesn't even surprise me there. It's like, yeah, that's what I expected. Yeah, it's about it's it's whatever. Super medium. I'm not playing it ever. You know who's not medium? Viscera Seer. He sacks creature to scry one. Best sack out of the format, right? Um, best creature sack outlet. Best creature sack outlet. Uh, okay. Otherwise, we're probably just splitting hairs. Yeah, yeah. It's the best creature that sacks creatures because the the altars are all way they're, they're way all pretty, way pretty better. Good. I think this is uh, a tier. Uh, bottom of A tier, top of B. No, maybe it's B. It's probably top of, or mid, like, right here. Yeah. It, it, it's very specific, and it's not, like, the end-all, be-all. Yeah, exactly, because, like, even if you're playing a deck that wants sack out lots, if you have all the altars, you don't need to go to this necessarily. But it is a creature. It is one mana. It's very, very efficient, and it goes in a ton of decks. Every Aristocrats deck, every Graveyard creature deck, every deck with 50 creatures that's black, it probably has this card. Yeah, exactly. Like, I have it in my Hensy deck. It's just, it's such a good card. If I, if you need a way to sack creatures and you don't want to spend a ton of money, especially because... Yeah, it's like five cents. It's five cents. Just throw it in there. I mean, I love this card. I think Mr. Seer is just an old performer. It's bread and butter of the format. It really is. It's, I love that he's like a representative of the format because it's it's perfectly fair. Yeah, it's it's a representative of like anything, any aristocrat deck. Like you're, that's why you're going to see Viscerous here all the time. All it takes is a deck that wants to sack creatures. Yep. Wayfarer's Bobble. Shout outs to the YouTube user Wayfarer's Bobble. You're officially on this list. You pay two and sack yourself to go get a basic land tapped. It's good for non-green decks that want to ramp. And also they have to be slightly lower power, maybe like mid to high, but high starts to fall out. This one, this one I think is really funny because uh, we get to look at a card like Manival versus a card like Wayfarer's Bubble, which we play right more. Undeniably, Manival is a more powerful magic card, okay? It has more potential. Uh, the floor on uh, Manival is, you know... Dark Ritual? Is Dark Ritual. And then, like... Well, Dark Ritual, lose five life. Lose five life. And then the ceiling is, like, crazy. Like, it pops off and makes you, like, ten mana in one turn. Like It feels like you skip two turns. Yeah, but Wait for His Bubble is a steady, right? It's always just in this middle spot where it's, like, three mana, go get a land, into the play, tapped. And it's an artifact, so it, it does trigger things. And But I'm playing it way more. Like, this is the card I'm putting in way more decks. Because I don't, I wouldn't really classify Mana Vault as ramp. It's fast mana. It's a ritual. Like, this, Wait for his Bubble is ramp. That's fair. Mana Vault is not really ramp. Now, I think it goes right next to Mana Vault on this list, because I think it's going to end up let's, in... Let's just make people mad and put it above. Oh, we said it. We said Wait for his Bubble in Commander better. Quote us. Better than Mana Vault. The, the, no, the, we already lost all those viewers. They unsubscribed when we put uh, Village Rights and Pooped here. <laughs> all right, you love this card, so I'll let you take the last one. Uh, yeah, this is uh, Wild Growth. Green Enchanted Land. It taps to add a green. This is oh, mana neutral right away, except for on turn one when you play it. Then, you know, next turn you untap and you're up a, a mana. This card is so good. It goes right next to Mana Dorks for me. I think it is 
as good, if not better, than Mana Dorks. Certainly can be. It's it's so silly. Why is Wild Growth? It's a card that, like, again, we slept on for a long time, but this card is incredible, period. Yeah, get it in more of your decks. It's budget-friendly. It's not a creature, so it won't have board wipes. You also lose a little bit of synergy when it's not a creature and you have, like, Beast Whisperer stuff. But you get to choose and spin the dial of what Mana Dorks do I play versus Wild Growth. The card's amazing. Um, definitely deserving to be an S tier. And I will say, if you're thinking... Man, this tier list is over. I want another one. There's another one already right here, and I think you'll really like it. Yeah, I don't know where you're pointing to, BZ, because it's actually down there. Go watch that video. Peace out, Tribe Scouts.